Good morning friends. This session is dedicated to class 12 and we are doing the third fiction Deep Water by William O. Douglas. Well friend, you may ask the question, sir, what is this story about? Well, this story is interestingly about the fact that the greatest fear that we have to fear is the fear itself. You know, the 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 the, the fear that cripples our mind is the greatest fear we have to fear. See, um, William Douglas, the narrator, describes two horrific incidents that occurred in his life and that really uh, brought out a change in his attitude. He describes, you know, an incident when he was just 10 or 11 years old a terrific incident occurred at the YMCA pool actually <coughs> YMCA pool was considered to be a very safe one so he decided to start swimming at YMCA pool but another incident that has happened in his childhood, early childhood, when he was three to four years old, his father took him to his beach in California. Unfortunately, the waves knocked him down and, you know, washed him. He was buried into water. He was breathless. Hardly he was, I mean, hardly he was rescued by his father. But his father only laughed at that very incident. He didn't take it very seriously. That very incident actually crippled his mind. And whenever he went near water, he often got, I mean, terrified. So when he decided to go for swimming and learn swimming at YMCA pool, which was considered safe because it was just two to three feet deep at the shallow end and nine feet deep at the, you know, deeper end. So he went to the YMCA pool and he imitated the other boys and started learning swimming. Gradually, he, you know, felt at ease in water. Then an incident took place. One day, he went to the pool for swimming. He was just sitting alone because there was no one. He was waiting for someone to come. All of a sudden, a bully, big bully came and took, I mean, Douglas and threw him at the deeper end. Douglas landed at the back bottom of the water. He was quite breathless. He had swallowed a lot of water. He struggled to come out of water. Several times he attempted, but every time he went down and he, there was nothing that was in front of his eyes, only the water. That very fear really made him feel as if he would be dead. Then, you know, after a lot of struggle, a lot of, I mean, uh, you know, struggle inside water, he tried to come out. Every time when he tried to come out of water, he went down into the bottom. Then after when he opened his eyes after a several, I mean, one and a half hour of struggling, he, he found himself, you know, lying on the edge of the pool and, you know, vomiting water. So that he remembered this very incident really terrorized him and he never went to that pool ever for learning swimming. But that, I mean, fear really didn't allow him to relax. He was deprived of, you know, the excitement of canoeing, swimming, you know, boating and all other excitements that he can do with water. So he never gave up. He went on thinking how to overcome that fear. So he decided to appoint a swimming instructor. He appointed a swimming instructor. That swimming instructor tied a belt around him and the belt was tied to a pulley. The other end was held by the instructor himself. So with the help of the rope and the you know, pulley, he, he was given training. Uh, for several months, he you know, was instructed by the swimming instructor and made I mean, his efforts to swim. Gradually, he gained confidence and he was able to learn swimming. When he learned swimming, he decided to prove himself. So, first of all, he decided to swim across, you know, a big pool 
uh, in hemisphere the name of the pool is you know uh, the name of the that that river is or that lake is lake wensworth in new hemisphere he swam 2 miles across this lake when uh, Douglas was in the middle of the lake. He put his face under and saw nothing but water, bottomless water. The old sensation came back to haunt him, but this time Douglas was strong. He swam on, yet he had some residual. At the first opportunity, he went to the warm lake. He swam to the other shore of the lake and back. He was thrilled with joy as he had conquered his fear of water. The experience had a deep meaning for him. He explains that death, death was very peaceful, but it was the fear of death that crippled a person. So he quoted saying that all that we have to fear is the fear itself because he had experienced death and the terror that it could produce. So this story um, teaches us the lesson that uh, the greatest fear that we have to fear is the fear itself. Douglas fear of water and aversion to water was eventually overcome by him himself when he attempted to learn swimming and proved his worth by swimming across the Wentworth Lake in New Hampshire and he also swam across the warm lake uh, and swam back again. So the experience that tells us that we should never you know be crippled by fear of anything because the greatest fear that we have to fear is the fear itself so this story is very inspiring for everyone whether he's an athlete or whether he's a swimmer every one of us has to face the struggle in the beginning and we should never be i mean disappointed or never be uh, you know terrorized by any sort of fear because it is the fear that cripples our mind and when we are strong at mind we can overcome all hurdles and all fear and we can prove like Douglas that anything can be learned and any fear can be overcome with an effort of perseverance patience and a, a strong will it was the strength of his will that Douglas overcame the fear of water and proved himself to be a good swimmer his example teaches us that we should never be afraid of small incidents in i mean our childhood and we should try to prove our worth by overcoming that very hurdle thank you very much i'm sure this will help you to go through the text and learn more about it thanks a lot